All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, I do want to say this is a really good head unit. You know, we're changing it to an Alpine unit, but this unit is actually very good. So we see here, you've got your audio sources, you've got radio, media, phone. This car has a factory reverse camera, okay, with the OPS display and the dynamic guidelines. Okay, so everything on this radio is really good. It even has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built in. However, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the physical buttons work, but your touch screen, uh, yeah, your touch screen has kaput. So what are your options? Your options are get a new RCD unit for, you know, a genuine unit with CarPlay built in and all that sort of stuff is very expensive or you get this repaired which is also very expensive so your other option is just do a head unit replacement because uh, relatively it is inexpensive you can get a unit with other features like digital radio if you want or you can just go down the road that our customer has gone which was just another replacement radio that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and that we retain all of these factory features. So, with that being said, before we pull the unit out, I'll go show you the parts that you're gonna need to do the head unit replacement, and then we'll go through the full install. This is the fascia. Now, what happens is this gap here, or this radio hole, is much bigger than the factory head unit. So, when we put the unit in, this here will cover the gaps, and, the ra and it will also mount the radio. Radio will sit inside, nice and easy. Next up, flush mount USB. There's two factory USB ports right here. Oh, sorry, there's one. I didn't see a USB retention on the website. So what we'll do is pull the unit out, see if there's any way that we can retain factory USB. If there's not, uh, we've already spoken to the customer about where we can put a flush mount. So I've done this wiring here already, but I'll show you guys basically how it works. This is all in a kit, this end here. And what happens is this harness here plugs into the harness that is already in the radio right now and it picks up speakers, power and can. That's literally it, right? It runs that over to this loom here. Okay, from so from this loom, boom, to this loom. This plugs into a module, which is right here. And just with power and can, this module can generate an accessory output, so that will turn our, tell our radio that it's time to turn on. It will generate uh, illumination, park brake, which is that one, and it will also, the main one we want here is reverse. So that reverse wire runs all the way down to here, and then it goes to about here. Now I've already taped and soldered these up, but it's it runs to an ISO plug. And now to make this completely plug and play, no wiring, you're gonna get an Alpine to ISO. So you've got Volkswagen to ISO, Alpine to ISO, and right here where I've done hardwire, plug them in. But what I did was go chop, chop, and then it's literally like black to black, yellow to yellow, green to green, okay? It's, it's, it's color to color. Two notes, orange white is your reverse on the Alpine unit, and purple white is your reverse on the aftermarket, on the retention, so, purple to orange, okay? Don't do illumination to orange. That'll make sense to some people. Secondly, this comes in the kit as well. So this is our, um, our antenna adapter. And you've got two little bare plugs here and it comes with a bunch of Farcra adapters. So you can plug in the Farcra plugs to here and then plug them into this unit, okay? It comes with a bunch because there's different types as you can see right there, okay? Then you've got this. That literally plugs into the module, that, that big module that I just showed you and then to the reverse camera input on your new head unit. It's really straightforward, but we did unpack a little bit there. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. But hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So what I'll do, I haven't, obviously this is messy. We're gonna neaten all this up, make a beautiful loom out of it. And we went through everything else. And lastly, USB. Uh, <laughs> USB, did you? Microphone. Now this microphone uh, has to be put in. Yes, it's aftermarket. You've confined somewhere you can wanna run it. We usually go in the roof lining, we hide it up here. Okay, you can't, you can, well, in this car you will see it, barely. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that later. Last thing, last, last thing is the patch leap. That goes from the new module to the head unit steering wheel control input. Okay, and this universal patch lead will, depending, just read your little instructions and uh, this will work on any head unit. Okay, Alpine, Kenwood, Pioneer, you name it. Okay, now the fun part. Removing this head unit, it's pretty straightforward. One, two, 
Okay, we're gonna remove those. There's gonna be a couple screws behind them. Once those two screws come out, they're T20, Torx 20s. Then you can start prying out this panel. We're gonna be using plastic the whole way around. Um, and that will expose the, the mounting hardware for that Marissa. Okay, so what we can see here, we've got the twin Farcra. So you just find the twin plug, and then all you need to do is pop these in. Boom, boom, all right. And then on the corners, there's a little little hole there, and they come with little locking tabs. You just pop them in. Okay, then all you gotta do really is uh, work out where you're gonna mount this. So right here is a cubby, and then through the top here, you can reach the top of it to get some good double-sided adhesive. Stick it on. And then we can wipe down this area, maybe like an alcohol wipe pad, and then stick it right down, it won't go anywhere. Before you mount it, we'll do the testing first, okay? So make sure you always test before you mount. So with the patch lead, if you're doing an Alpine unit, all you have to do is cut the green loop. And we're using the jack, 3.5 millimeter jack. Okay, fascia's pretty easy. So this is the front. You can sort of see the way that it tapers where it's gonna sit. All you need to do, is two screws on the back, well four rather, or two on each side. Just get your brackets that it comes with, line them up with the screws, and then screw them in with the supplied screws. Um, and then once that's in, all you have to do, once these two brackets are screwed on, slide the new head unit in and screw it up. It's very, very easy. So I'll touch back when that's done. That's the head unit in place. Okay, as you can see, it looks very nice. It looks clean. We've got the screws holding it in. Now what I like to do is test before we run the mic, before we run anything else. Let's just test and see that everything's working. The last thing you want, trust me, is to have the whole job back together and then you realize something doesn't work and you're like, damn, I've done that. We've all done that. So it's better that you test as you go. Okay, rant over. Okay, let's turn her on. <clears throat> all right, we've got a good sign here. Wouldn't expect much less. Uh, it's steering wheel controls. Haven't plugged in the um, antenna. Yep, it's on rear camera. So let's go into reverse quickly, try and get my melon out of the way. Okay, so it's showing us the park assist. It's not showing us the camera. Let's see if we can fix that. All right, we're back. So I guess this module allows you to um, use the factory settings and factory features in the car. So what you wanna do is go to the camera input. So this is how the module sends video to the camera. We're gonna press and hold speech for two seconds. There we go. So what you want to do is go preferences, okay. So camera connected is on no. Let's go ahead and change that to a yes. So now if we go into reverse, let's save these settings first. Okay, it's not showing us camera. Okay guys, so here is a great example of a product that claims to retain camera, at least in one way or another, um, but does not. So what we would get was, you might have saw in there, on the video, you go to reverse, it only shows parking sensors, it wouldn't show the reverse camera. So, the only reason I knew this was just because of knowledge from working on European cars for so long. But what I do know is that with these vehicles, I know European cars, you know, some people don't like to work on them, they can be a pain or whatever. The factory camera, just like most of the other components of this car, has its own module. So, basically what that means is, you put the car into reverse, the module gets power, powers up the camera, does everything for you, and all that happens up here is a video signal. So I knew that somewhere in this plug was a video signal, and that's what I found. So this module to retain camera, basically what it wants is how we had it set up was like this. That goes to video input on your um, aftermarket harness, and that's gonna give you your OPS display, vehicle settings, all that stuff that we looked at. But this needs a video input to show you a, a reverse camera, okay? So, what in most cars, what would you do? You'd get a reverse camera retention harness, do your plug, do your hardwire, do whatever you've got to do, and then plug in the video cable here. There's no retention harness available for this car, um, partly because 
there's not much you can do behind here. But all they really had to do was add a couple pins in the quad lock connector that had an RCA coming off of it. You can see here I've already soldered these up. I've just left it bare so you guys can see. I'll get you a better look. Okay, here is your quad lock connector. So on one side, you've got this green plug, okay? So if you look at the top here where the mechanism is, the, the little locking tab, you've got a green plug at the top left. And right next to that, on the top right, if we're, looking, if we're putting the, the plug at the top, is a blue plug. And within that blue plug, on the far end, there's two sort of thick wires there. You may or may not have them, not needed. On the left-hand side, so we're gonna be looking at pin number, number six and 12. So pin six is white. That's your video. Okay, as you can see right here where my finger is, right there, that's video. And the black wire is shield. And all you need to do is what I've done right here, is tap on an RCA. So we've got RCA video going to white, RCA shield going to black. We're gonna tape them up and that's just gonna plug into your reverse camera input and that's all she wrote. That's your camera retention done. We've now done the camera retention. I'll tape that up. We can plug in our quad lock. We tested steering wheel controls and everything else. That all works. All I'm going to do now is run the microphone. I said earlier, we put that in the roof lighting. Not gonna film that because I say it in every video, you can put that wherever you want. So find a spot where you wanna run the mic or mount the mic rather. Mount it, run it to here. I'm gonna go roof lining, remove this A pillar, run it down nicely. And secondly, your head unit will come with dun, 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 a USB. Again, run it wherever you want, run it to the glove box, run it by your foot, do whatever you want with it. Okay, we are back. Now, everything is run, microphone is right here, patch lead is right here, uh, USB, which I've done the flush mount, it looks really good, I'll definitely get you a look at that. Um, our powers are here, our antenna is here so we can tape this stuff up, we're not going to need it. And everything else is taped up looking fantastic. So what I want to do, basically get the radio mounted. Okay, so there's our antenna. I don't know if I said that before, but for the one person that that camera hacked help, shout out to you. Okay, so as you can see, that is a perfect fit. Um, these fascias do have a very little bit of play in them, okay? So you need to make sure, oh yeah, that'll, the screws will hold that in. Um, yeah, you need to make sure you line it up nicely and then just check all your lines, check that everything's in, all right. Okay, FM, steering wheel controls. And this shit looks really good actually, this unit in this dash. Okay, reverse gonna bring up what factory camera factory guidelines mate imagine how many people would have told this customer camera can't be retained can't can't be done got to change it <laughs> all right now check this out you go there there is a button on the steering wheel here it's a voice control button you're just gonna press that press and hold that and it's gonna switch it to your park assist so were we able to retain the camera and the park assist the OPS in one picture no um, were we able to retain both? Yes, and so I think that's, you know, that's just a loss that you got to cop. But in turn, this is still a great system, it's still going to work well. We've set up radio, USB, so let's go ahead and test Apple CarPlay. Look at that. Oh yeah. I was taking a minute off, then another guy, two minutes on that. So it made... Okay, now we can go here. Hey Siri, how are you today? I'm pretty good, thanks. Good, CarPlay works. Um, I've got many videos showing you guys how CarPlay works, so if you wanna see, actually see that, just let me know, but here it is, you know. It's very, very simple, it's very straightforward. You, all of, it's basically using your iPhone on the screen, um, however Apple have optimized it so that it's safe, example. You can't go ahead and read your, your messages, you've got to, um, Siri will read them out to you. What do you want to say? See? Hello, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But that is pretty much it. So we check the camera. Um, we've got USB working. Microphone works. All that's left for me now is to clean all this up. Um, and job is done. 